sleepapnea.org presents Portraits, Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Brian Delaney. Brian, when did you know that something was wrong with your sleep? Well, I got diagnosed in 2003, so it's been a while. Um, probably six months before diagnosis is when I really noticed something was wrong with me. Um, falling asleep everywhere, but not really sleeping. Uh, couldn't concentrate. Had a lot of difficulty doing my job and not getting in trouble, you know. And uh, it all culminated with uh, me having a really bad car wreck. And uh, that kind of was a straw that broke the camel's back where I realized that it was beyond something I could fix myself, you know. I needed to find uh, what was wrong with me. And then I got diagnosed rather quickly. As far as sleep health, what was your rock bottom moment? My rock bottom was when I was driving home from work. Um, I kept, I guess I felt like I was getting hematized as I drove. You know, your, your brain just sort of shuts off, but your eyes are open. And you're not really picking up what's, you're not reacting to what's going around you. And I got off on the wrong exit and didn't really notice. And then the next thing I realize, I'm um, doing 45 miles an hour in the car in front of me is like 20 feet away. And then I just crashed into him and, and basically that culminated in hitting like five other cars. So that was my rock bottom moment because I knew it was definitely, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, my eyes are open. They call it a micro sleep, I guess, is where your eyes are open, but your brain's off because I was so deprived of sleep over that I'd say six month period that by the time I, when I had this micro sleep, I, I really never, I didn't sleep for <laughs> like a six month period. And that was my rock bottom, you know, that was, uh, you know, a near death experience right there. What was the process of diagnosis and treatment like? I went to the doctor and told him the story. Um, he listened and he realized just from me telling him what I was going through that without a doubt I had sleep apnea. And he told me it was probably going to be one of the worst cases he thinks. And he, and he, what he actually did was he had, he called up the sleep place and canceled other people and said, okay, this guy needs to get in there because <laughs> there's something wrong with him and it's pretty severe. So he made me two appointments, one for Monday, one for Tuesday. Monday was the sleep test. Tuesday was the titration where they actually give you a mask to wear and figure out your pressure. So Monday I went, found out my sleep apnea was uh, 145 an hour AHI. So it's pretty high. Uh, 145 times an hour, my I stopped breathing. So that's a lot. <laughs> it's more than every twice, in, twice a second, you know? I mean, just, you know, different events. It's like an average number of events in an hour. Um, the next night I had titration where they put a mask on you and then they figure out what pressure stops your uh, apnea. And I slept for four hours with that mask on. And that was the best four hours of sleep I had in six months. I literally felt like a reborn person after that four hours. And the worst part of it was that, you know, you got like, here's the machine, you give you a little taste of sleep. And then they say, okay, you'll get your, your machine in a couple of weeks. And then you're like, seriously, I have to wait two weeks to get that sleep again. <laughs> and then you're like, it was like, like, a, you know, somebody gave you, gave you some candy and then they don't give it to you again for two weeks as a little kid. It's just torture. So that two weeks was the most memorable two weeks because I knew what it was like to sleep with it, but I didn't have one. You know, if I had a friend that had one, I would have stole it, you know? And then when I got my own machine, I've, it, you know, I'm one of those people that the CPAP and me, the, the puzzle pieces fit, that, fit together because it worked perfectly. Because all my sleep apnea is physical. So it just, once if my throat's kept open, then I'm fine. You know, I sleep solid right now for since 2003 till today, I, I have no issues with sleep. How did things change once you received your CPAP? When I finally got my CPAP, it was a night and day experience in, in how I became as a person. You know, it was a level of competence that I didn't have when I was sleep deprived. You know, you're at work, you're doing your job, but you know, I, I, I'm retired law enforcement. So I was probably a, a, a danger for the six month period, you know, not thinking straight, not doing things correctly. But once I got on the machine 
um, I a hundred times better than before, you know, paying attention, know what's going to happen, doing my job correctly, not having to redo things, not forgetting things, being more alert, being aware of my surroundings, which obviously is important in that line of work. How is your sleep apnea impacting your family? Well, the first three or four years of my uh, being married, I didn't sleep in the bedroom because I snored so much. My wife would, she'd actually leave the room. And then at some point I was like, you know what? I'll just sleep on the couch. And so the first three or four years of my marriage, I didn't sleep in the same room as my wife. Then once I got my machine, you know, the snoring ended 100% right there. So I don't snore at all with the CPAP on and we sleep in the same room and been that way since, you know, I diagnosed it. So and obviously that makes a, a huge emotional difference when you don't have to sleep on a couch, you know. What advancements would you like to see in this field? Well, I started off with a loud CPAP, you know, and now I have a virtually silent APAP, which is an adjustable, you know, machine. Um, I like to see more advancements for other people that have other options. Like for me, the puzzle pieces fit together and it works fine, but there's other people that can't wear a mask or that they just can't uh, get used to it, I guess. And uh, I would like to see other options, you know, it's not a one size fits all scenario with sleep apnea, which is, you're kind of forced at that right now. What would you say to someone who may have sleep apnea? My advice is for you to learn as much as you can, be aware, and don't be afraid of it. You know, a lot of people don't want to admit that they might need to wear a mask. As soon as you say, oh, you gotta, you may have to wear a mask. So like, so they don't even want to go through the steps to get a mask. But from my perspective, I know what it's like to need a mask and not have it, you know? I mean, once you've, not everyone is, hits rock bottom with this disease. Some people have mild apnea and it just affects you a little bit. I think sometimes you have to hit rock bottom <laughs> to know how positive uh, the treatment is and how it's gonna change you, you know? Just get it treated, that's the answer. Just do it, there's really no other option. You know, I always tell people, uh, uh, treat it like it's not optional, then it becomes easy. How does the Awake Together Summit help the community? You know, the, the benefit of a conference like this is people to realize they're not alone. Like some people think well, I'm the only person <laughs> with sleep apnea, but you're really not. I mean, if you ask everyone to raise their hand, you know, you'd get a lot of people raising their hand and you realize things, things like this make you realize that there's, you're not alone. There's a whole plethora of people that are, you know, either helping you or have it themselves, you know. And uh, with sleep apnea, there's a lack of uh, knowledge and education out there. So once the conversation started, you know, it's a, it's a good thing for people to learn. You know, I, I run a Facebook page called Fun With Sleep Apnea, and that's what I do. I use humor to educate and keep people aware and uh, to talk them into, you know, not giving up on their, because there's a huge number of people that give up on the machine because it's, they put it on, they don't sleep, they take it off, and then they sleep, but they don't sleep that great. But if they do this every night, you know, it gets much harder to just literally wear that mask. So, you know, my advice is to, it boils down to just give it a chance, realize it's not optional, wear the mask, and just push past it because persistence is what's gonna help you. Brian, do you have any final thoughts or comments for the sleep apnea community? My final words would be um, just learn as much as you can and become your own advocate. Don't depend on your doctor to know everything because you know, it, you're the patient, so you need to be the person that knows everything. So learn as much as you can about your own treatment, your own uh, health, and you be your advocate and you solve your own issue by uh, education, awareness, and helping others. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.